So we finished off with the uh, conditional statement of if, else, and else if. So we need to have a look at another flavor of conditionals that's known as a selection statement, that's known as the switch case default statements. Now that's, uh, that's a different uh, conditional statement because it has some different implementations. What switch case statements does they are basically based on the selection procedures. If you have a certain value, suppose your user, he passed in a certain value. Maybe you have a field inside, uh, your form has a field that's known as age. So your website can only um, it can only be accessible by a certain age group. You want uh, you want only a certain age group to access few um, if, few of your pages. So in order to uh, eradicate any problem, you can use a switch statement. So if an user is, uh, you can actually check if it can be used with uh, an if else statement. But what a switch statement can do? Suppose you want only uh, people from ages 20, 21, 22, 23 to access certain pages. You don't want anyone else outside that age group to access in uh, your specified pages. Uh, so to al only allow those age groups to uh, access those pages, you can use a switch case statement. Now, you take the user I user's input from the form fill of age and you pass it along the switch case statement. You see that whether the user is 20, whether the user is 21, or whether the user is 22 or 23. If none of them uh, of the above is, uh, in, if none of the above gets matched, then you pass in along a default statement. So to pass an in, inside the default statement, you inform the user that you're not allowed to uh, access that access those uh, classified or maybe certain pages. So in times of a different conditional approach about selection, you need to use a switch case statement. So in this video lesson, we're going to look at how to use a switch case statement. So basically, we're going to recreate what we have created in our conditional part. We create, we cr used uh, if a statement in here when we looked at how to create an FAQ section. Let's recreate this inside uh, our new script. But first, let's save this. So I've opened up a new uh, editor page and I need to save this as switch.cfm. Now it's empty and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to pass in along a parameter. We're going to pass in along a default value and we're going to use a single dimensional arrow with structures. I hope you remember what arrows and structures are. So let's use them to create that and the basic output on our web page will be the uh, same thing, but it's going to be different from the back end uh, view. It's going to be different when we create the script. Now let's create that CF script. And let's use the end tag. Now we are going to um, create the parameter. Param. Um, so we need the name and we're going to pass in along URL dot questions. The previous one we named it as FAQs, but I'm just um, changing the name in here. So it's just the same thing. You can even copy and paste it. And the mid of the program or the primary focus will not be the if. I'll be showing you how to use the switch expression and the case values along with the default case statement. Now let's recreate this and uh, we need to have a default value and this time let's pass in a value of 2 and let's ta use a type of any. Now in here you can actually see we're just replicating the same thing. You can even copy this along and change the name but I like typing it anyway. So the any type is actually telling the browser we can use any form of um, data types. 
So there can be integer strings, but base, but we'll be focusing on using uh, we'll be focusing on using a string data service. The difference why I'm uh, typing all this again is that I'll be showing you another new field. I'll be creating another new ID field, which will make our search a lot easier. So let's create this questions. This will be an um, this will be an array of a single dimension, and um, yeah, I actually forgot the function name. So yeah, this is array new, and the first one. Remember that arrays are like an indexed list. So let's create the first list, and we need a new structure. So we are going to use struct new and here we go now because it's an array what we are going to do is that we are going to pass along the question no I actually need to pass along the ID first so this is the additional field that I'm using so this is this this is going to have the ID of a you might even uh, wonder that why am I using a string value perhaps an alphabet inside a string value inside this ID when the ID usually is a numeric value it needs it usually uh, is a number but you can actually change that you can actually manipulate that and your script will run even if you don't if you even if you don't pass in along a number your ID can be even a string like I'm using it in here so let's pass along the um, question so the question that we're going to let's copy the question what was the first question yeah what, what is your profession copy and paste and why don't we um, get the answer so let's use developer and maybe a an designer and now what we need to do is we have created our first array then this is the first array element I hope you don't get confused with all the structure and the array what I what I've done is that I've created an array of a single dimension which means it will only have single elements it can have multiple elements but it won't have elements inside elements it will only have a single list of elements like um, maybe when you go to a shop uh, maybe when you go to a supermarket you, you need to buy several household stuff you might want to buy cooking utensils you might even buy food you can even buy clothing so there are single elements but when we talk about multi-dimensional arrays suppose uh, uh, you want to buy cooking in utensils. I'm not really familiar with all those utensils because I'm not a really great cook. I don't even know how to cook that much food. But, uh, uh, but what we need to consider in here is that suppose you buy a pan. A pan, a saucepan maybe, a saucepan is a single element inside your list. You buy that. Now you need to also buy a smaller Pan. You need to also buy maybe a cover for the pan. I'm not excuse. Uh, please excuse my examples, but that's how. Uh, that's uh, that's how maybe that's easier for me to explain. Now, you might want to buy uh, a cover for the pan. You might even want to buy a stick, whatever you call that. You might even want to buy um, clothes to hold warm things. Uh, that warm saucepan I don't know what what you call them but the focus in here is that the first element you buy is a saucepan that's a single element inside your list the other elements like the cover or the stick that you buy are secondary elements so that's those two uh, elements are uh, those two uh, secondary elements are elements inside the primary element the primary element was the saucepan the secondary elements are 
the stick and the cover so when we talk about these two elements inside a list they are known as